Hey everyone, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com. And in this series of The Automation Show, I'm going to walk you through connecting up an incremental encoder to your PLC. Now we're going to cover several different PLCs over the course of the series, but uh, at the beginning of each of them, we're going to cover the details about the encoder. So you only have to watch one of the episodes to learn how to connect it up to your PLC and use it. Now, before we get going, I do want to thank our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation, as well as thank the latest two vendors that set us in samples. We have a uh, beautiful unified comfort panel that came in from Siemens. I want to thank them for that. They even gave us a video to put on there to run in the background. So um, just beautiful. We're, we're actually reorganizing the demo wall here. So the hardware wall. So um, you can see I've moved things around. Also want to thank the good folks over at Mitsubishi for that HMI that they sent in, which we'll use with the FX5 they sent us. So just uh, really appreciate them. And I also want to thank IFM who sent in the incremental encoder we're going to be using. Now this is the RVP510 and um, this encoder comes out of the box set up as an incremental encoder with uh, 1024 pulses per revolution. But there's some cool things about this encoder. First of all, the uh, pulses per revolution is changeable. It's programmable and you can change it to be, uh, you know, all the way up to uh, one through 10,000 pulses per revolution. So 10,000 pulses, per, that's a lot of pulses, right? So um, that said, we're leaving this at the default out of the box. I haven't changed it or programmed that this is 1024. So uh, that said, it also supports IO link. And how do you program it? Well, it has this beautiful display on the back, very similar to the temperature sensors that we uh, used in earlier episodes. And um, I love the display because as I turn it, you can see the count go up. And that's just great for when you're a YouTuber and an online instructor like myself. Um, having that visual feedback is just great. You can see I'm turning it very, very slowly here. See if we can get it up. I'll go a little faster. See if we can get up around 10, 20. Whoop, there it goes. Back up. Yep. Well, that's about as close as I can get it. So with that said, the first thing I want to cover in this show is how to wire it. Now, the book that came with it was more of like a programming book. So um, what I had to do is take a manual I found on their website and combine that information with the cables information. So here you can see the cable I'm using with this and you can see one is brown, two is white, three is blue, etc. So I have to take that information then I'll put up a page out of their manual, their RVP 510-01 manual from their website. And you can see I took the color code and I put it right on top of there. So if we look at this we can see one brown is DC positive, okay? And that's kind of common, right, with sensors. And a two is white, and that is your A signal from the encoder. Three is blue, which is ground. Again, blue is typically, you know, DC negative or ground. Um, four is black, and that's the Z pulse. And then five is gray, and that's B, and so on. So by combining those two together, I get the wiring. Now at this point, let me pull out the PLC we're going to cover in this episode, and I'll be right back. Okay, in this episode, we're going to cover the Micrologix 1100. But before we do, I do want to thank Wago for donating the power supply. I reached out to a bunch of vendors on LinkedIn and asked for sample power supplies that replaced the old ones I got off eBay. And Wago and Siemens both sent uh, power supplies and 10 amp power supplies. So thank you. Look how small that is. Well, I love it. So a uh, big thank you to them. I would definitely be using that on uh, IO Link later this fall, but uh, did want to say thank you to them for uh, supplying the power supply. And now with that, let's go ahead and zoom in here on the 1100 and let's talk about the wiring, okay? So first we'll start down here. Here you can see I got the, uh, the brown and the blue coming in, the plus and minus. And then you can see the white, that's A, and the pink is A naught. The gray is B, and the purple is B naught. The black is Z, and the orange is Z naught. So um, I'm only using the A and B with the Micrologix 1100. Let's go up here and take a look at that now, okay? So you can see there, I have, I wonder if I can go in even closer. I should probably put my glasses on too. Okay, so there you can see I got the white or A going to zero and I have the red B going to one. And that's because the Micrologix 1100 supports four high speed DC inputs. Now I have a series A, so they only go up to 20 kilohertz, okay? But uh, it does support four. 
And because I wanted to do pulse and direction, I've wired up A and B, okay? So that'll give me pulse and direction. Now, if I take the encoder here and I turn it, right? You can see zero one flickering on and off. I'm trying to turn it really slow, okay? So we can see everything's wired up correctly. So now it's time to go over to the computer and actually set up the uh, Micrologix 1100. Okay, we're over at the computer here. You can see I'm in RS Logix 500. I'm gonna go to File, New. And because we're doing the 1100, I'm gonna look for it down here. Where are you? There you are. Excellent. Series A is what I have. So we'll choose that. I'm gonna go into IO configuration. I'm gonna double click on my controller. I'm gonna tell it it's a BBB. Let's go take a look at uh, RS Links to confirm that. Yep, it's a BBB. Okay, and it's a 16 point. Now what I'm not gonna do is play with these filters to show you what happens when you don't uh, change those because it's um, you'll, it just definitely won't work. <laughs> so with that said, um, okay, that part's good. So we'll close that. And now we'll go into the function files for the counter here. And we have HSC zero, okay. And if we look here, we can see first of all, program number. Now I don't wanna give it a program number. I'm not gonna use the interrupt, but if I don't, it faults the controller and I'll show you that. We'll leave that blank right now. Um, what I do wanna do here is I definitely want the start when the controller starts and I definitely want counting enabled, okay? Those are the two things I want, okay? And then, if we come down here, right, the other thing I want to do is change the mode, okay? Now I'm going to put up a page from the manual to show you why I'm choosing um, mode number six, okay? Okay, now the first page we'll look at is this is from the installation instructions. And this just shows us that depending on the model you have, you'll have inputs zero through three to be your high speed DC inputs, okay? Here's a look at the terminal block here. We're using zero and one. Okay, here's the quadrature encoder. Now this is from RM001. And you can see um, A, B, and Z. I'm not using the Z, I'm not resetting. So input zero and one, that's what I have it wired for. And that's if you're using a quadrature encoder. And um, then here, this shows you HSC mode six. And this is what I want, because if you look down here at this chart, and this chart is a little confusing. But if you look at this chart, basically, when you're going forward, it's going to count up. And when you're going backwards, it's going to count down. And because we're using mode six, um, uh, input number two and three are not used. Those can be used for anything else. So they're actually not used at all. And um, you really only get one high speed counter. You get four high speed inputs. So I want to make sure I'm clear on that. So with that said, that's why I chose mode six. Okay. And that's very important. So you can see here. This is the uh, manual that information was in. Okay, so with that, let me go back to RS Logix, and I put the mode six in there, so I'm pretty good. I'm not gonna change any of these other things. What we're gonna watch here is the accumulator. Now, remember, I did not put this program file in. I'm not using any interrupts, okay? These were on by default, I'm gonna leave them on, but I'm not using uh, interrupt. I don't need an interrupt to run and jump to a program. So let's see if this works, okay? So I'm gonna save. Okay, we'll just call it, uh, let's see here, we'll call it ML1100 with encoder. Okay, and we'll save that in our 500 here. Okay, so with that done, let's do com system comms. I already have it selected, we'll download. Yes, do I wanna download? Yes, take it out of run mode, put it in the program mode. Apply, it says the ethernet won't change until you reboot, change back to run, go online, and it's faulted. Why is it faulted? This makes no sense, right? Well, let's go to the error. And you can see here, hey, go see the HSC error function file to find out what the error is. Okay, so I won't clear it yet, but let's see if we can go into the function file, okay. And here we can see the error code is number one. And if I bring up the manual here and put that on the screen, you'll see that's because PFN doesn't have a value. So I'm kind of unhappy about that. I don't know if there's a way to get around that, but I couldn't find one. So how am I gonna get around this? Well, I can't create a new ladder file while I'm uh, 
while I'm online. So let me go offline. Okay, we'll create a new ladder file, a junk file here. We'll just call it uh, 99. And I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to come back here to the function files. And we'll make that 99. Okay, I want to check everything else. Make sure you have auto stop. Make sure you have counting enabled. Make sure I'm in mode six. That's great. And now let's save and we'll download this. Yes. Again, we're doing this on the bench so we don't have to worry about affecting production. All right. So we'll put her in the run mode. Let's see if she faults this time. No, oh, she's happy. That's good. Okay. So we'll go back into the function files here, right? And let's see here. Let's look at our accumulate value. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to the micro 1100 and I'm going to turn, we can see I'm turning the uh, encoder. We can see it counting up. See the ons and offs coming on and off. Okay. And I can see that it's counting. All right, 96. What happens if I go really fast though? Look at, I just turned this really fast. Really fast. <laughs> it's not counting. What's going on? It counts when I go really slow. Look at that. But if I go really fast, no counts. And the reason for that is because of the input filter, the fault. You know, it's trying to eliminate contact bounce. Maybe if you have some push buttons wired in. So the default is kind of conservative, right? And won't work with an encoder. Or you won't be able to get your 20 kilohertz anyways. So how are we going to get around that? Well, let's go ahead and see if we can change it. I do not believe this is something I can change on the fly here. Nope. So we're going to go back offline again. Okay, let's see, offline. Okay, we'll go to IO config. We'll come in here. And we are going to set these as low as possible. And I only have to do really, the, well, I really only use them zero and one, so I don't have to even change this guy. So 25 microseconds, okay? All right, now we'll download it again. Okay, yes, go online. Excellent. Let's go back to our function files. Okay. And where's our accumulate? There it is. You can see it right there. Can I? No, you can't zoom in on the function files. All right. So we're back out here at the desk. And let me zoom out of this a little bit here. Give myself some more room. All right. And we're going to turn it slow. You can see it's counting up. And I'm going to turn it fast. Still counting up. Yep, now it's fast enough to actually catch those pulses because it doesn't have that default filter. I didn't even look up what the default filter is. It's just, as you can see, it was too slow. So I'm already at 16,000. Now let me go backwards. And this is the beauty about having A and B and using that mode six. So it can sense which direction the encoder is going in automatically. And now we can see it's going backwards because I'm turning it backwards. And now we're in the negatives. So pretty cool. Um, very useful. You only get one, right? But um, you can use it with an encoder and get, uh, you know, pulse and direction. You get the count up and down and, um, you know, it works and it works really well. Except for those couple of things you have to know. We had to put in that program number to jump to, even though we're not using that feature. You know, we're not using a counter base interrupt to jump to a program file to do something. Like you could do that maybe on the Z is jump to a, a, a subroutine. Um, but we had to put that number in there anyways, right? And then we had to um, disable the filters and really set it to the highest input frequency we could, which was a, a filter of 25 microseconds. But after we did those two things, everything worked. We just had to enable and set the auto start, and it worked pretty good. So um, that's mode six when you're using the Micrologix 1100. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please give us a like and a thumbs up. And if you know anybody who needs automation training, please ask them to come visit me over at theautomationschool.com. I also want to thank our patrons who help keep the show going, as well as the uh, vendors who sent in uh, new HMIs. We've reached out to a number of vendors to try to get them to come on the podcast too, to tell us about the new products. I know with COVID, it's so hard to get out. 
right? And you can't really get that out to trade shows and whatnot. So we've asked a lot of vendors to come on and tell us about their new products. And uh, we really appreciate all the vendors that have already. We've had, I don't know, a dozen or so come on already. So really appreciate their, their time to do that. And with that, I think that's it for this episode. We'll cover more uh, PLCs in the coming episodes in the series. But for right now, I just want to wish you all a very safe, healthy, and happy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.